Increased product variety leads to more fragmented demand, more demand uncertainty, and ultimately an increased mismatch between supply and demand. The major weapon against this mismatch is an increase in flexibility. To the extent that we can produce exactly what demand requires, there is no supply-demand mismatch. In this session, we'll introduce the concept of shortening setup times to increase flexibility. We'll also talk about how you can configure a network of plants so that the plant network as a whole is able to absorb the demand uncertainty, benefiting from the effects of pooling. First, consider the effects of setups. We spent a fair bit of time earlier on this module to talk about how setups reduce capacity. To avoid this, we like to run long production runs, which in turn, however, leads to inventory. The idea behind SMED is that rather than taking the setup times as a given exogenous variable, we start challenging the setup times itself. So why does it take 30 minutes to set up the machine? What is actually going on during those 30 minutes? The word SMED stands for a single minute exchange in dies. It used to take automotive companies a couple of hours to change between one set of production tools to another. Typically, these are big stamping tools that weigh many, many tons and again take hours and hours to change over. SMED, single minute, means we want to get from hours to minutes. This in turn allows us to change the model much more frequently, reducing inventory. The key idea behind SMED is that every setup can be broken up into two types of activities. They're called external activities and internal activities. Think about the process of making the setups in our shirt example. We noticed that some of the shirt setup included programming a CNC machine with a measurement of our particular customer. Instead of doing this while the machine is in setup, this could potentially be done while the machine is still producing cutting another shirt type. So this allows us to change external setups that can be done while the machine is running and move them up front. This cuts down on the setup time that the machine is really standing still. By then subsequently improving the things that need to happen as part of external setups and as part of internal setups I reduce the total amount of setup time. Again, shorter setups now mean that I can change the models more often, which is at the heart of mixed model production, or what we earlier on labeled as hey Junker. The idea of setup time reduction and the idea of separating between internal and external setups are by no means limited to production equipment. Consider the following two examples. Consider an airplane. Airplanes make money when they're in the air, and so the process of being on the ground, taxiing and landing, standing at the gate, is eating into their capacity. What can we do based on the ideas of internal and external setups? The idea of external setups is to try to shorten the time that the plane is at the gate by doing some things ahead of time or potentially in parallel. So for example, one of the things that you know Southwest doing is carefully lining up the passengers while they're still at the terminal, while the previous passengers are deboarding. This allowed them to basically cut the time that it would take the new passengers to get on the airplane. Similarly, think about cleaning the plane. A lot of the activities related to cleaning the plane, refilling it with drinks and meals, refueling it, are happening while, for example, the passengers are deboarding. Similarly, think about an operating room. Now, arguably, an operating room is not running big production batches of 10 patients with knee surgery in a row without setups, but an operating room needs to be set up between every procedure. Again, think about the concept of internal and external setups. Clearly, cleaning the operating room is an internal setup. It can only happen in when the operating room is idle. On the other hand, a lot of the patient preparation and the anesthesiology work can happen on a patient outside the operating room while the previous procedure is still going on. Once the room is empty and clean, the patient under anesthesiology can just simply be wheeled in and the overall setup time is much shorter.
Consider a car company that offers 10 models that are made in 10 different plants. Each model is made in exactly one plant. So you have model 1 that is made in plant 1. You have model 2 that is made in plant 2 and so on. There's no flexibility in this plant network to have one plant make multiple cars or have one car be made in multiple plants. Now this is problematic as we saw earlier on in our session on pooling and demand fragmentation. This leads to a lot of variability at each of the plants. Or put differently, if we could somehow pool the demand across models or across plants, we would reduce the supply-demand mismatch. Ideally what we would love is we would like to have a plant network where every plant would be able to make every one of the products. This is the most flexibility that we can ever hope for and we would get the full benefits of pooling that we discussed in the earlier session. Now the downside of such fully flexible plant network is that you're going to have lots of setups at each of the production settings. So if you take a look here at for example plant number five, you're going to produce many different products in this plant requiring many setups. Moreover, you are going to invest a lot of money into tooling the plant so that it is able to make each of the 10 products. So full flexibility is typically not a practical option. As an alternative to full flexibility, consider the concept of what's known as partial flexibility. The idea of partial flexibility is that you design the plant network so that you assign every product to two plants and vice versa, you make the, to every one of the plants sufficiently flexible to produce at least two different products. It can be shown that such partial flexibility is getting you almost all the benefits of full flexibility, but at dramatically lower cost. Let me illustrate the concepts of partial flexibility in the case of the automotive industry. On the left of this slide, you see the plant to vehicle assignment of Ford in the United States. Here you see the plants, and over here you see the various product platforms. Notice how the Ford plant network has relatively little flexibility. In most cases, you have a vehicle dedicated to a plant and a plant dedicated to a vehicle. On the right here, you see a nice ex application of partial flexibility. Nissan's assignment from vehicles to plant is really very much in the spirit of what I showed you on the previous slide. Typically, plants are able to make multiple vehicles and many of the vehicles are assigned to multiple plants. Again, this is not as expensive as a full flexibility, but it almost gives you all of the benefits. As another example of this idea of partial flexibility, consider the case of software developers. As a manager hiring a pool of software developers, ideally you would love to have software developers that are able to do everything. Program in C++, SQL, graphics designs, Drupal, whatever it might be. However, such fully flexible developers are rare and would be very expensive. The idea of partial flexibility is that you would hire people who master two areas of work, say SQL and C++. You would make sure that everybody you hire would at least be able to do two different things for you, and you make sure that for every domain where you need software development expertise in, you hire at least two people. This gives you a partial flexibility at dramatically lower cost. Instead of optimizing the batch sizes, given the setup time, why not challenge the setup times themselves? After all, it is the setup times that are the root cause for all the problems that we've encountered so far in this module. In this session, we talked about the concept of SMED. SMED stands for Single Minute Exchange of Dyes, and it's a very powerful way to cut setup times. You can apply SMED to production settings, but you can also apply SMED to reducing the changeover time in an operating room or the gate time for an aircraft. We also saw how you can configure a network of plants in a way that takes advantage of pooling demand uncertainty. We saw that a little bit of flexibility often goes a very long way, especially if you chain the plants and thereby configure the plant network in a clever way.